Hello friends, welcome back to my video series on analysis of determinate structures. So we are in the energy methods and energy principles. So in the previous video, I we were actually analyzing this truss means analysis means we were about to find vertical deflection at D. So at point D, I had applied a one kilonewton of force without any external forces of 15 and 20 kilonewton. I analyzed this truss by method of joints and I try to find the force in each and every member of the truss and I'm calling these forces as virtual forces. So if you are directly viewing this video, please go back and check my part one video. And after that, now after finding the virtual forces, now we need to calculate the real forces. Real forces, I mean to say the force in each and every member of the truss because of this 15 and 20 kN. Now once again, we have to analyze this truss by method of joints taking each joint separately and finding force in each and every member. Now what I will do here is I will take up joint A and joint B and try to find the forces in each and every member of the truss only when I consider joint A and B. Hope uh, you can do the same thing in the to find the forces in other members of the truss. So now what I have done, I have taken the same truss with real loads. So that's why I'm calling real forces and I'm trying to find the reaction at A and E vertical reaction. So I'm finding it as 7.5 and 27.5 kN. You can get it use easily using equilibrium equations. Now I will take joint A and draw the free body diagram. Okay, I have drawn the free body diagram of joint A. I'm assuming some forces in member AB and AD. AB, I'm assuming it as a tensile force and AD, I'm assuming it as a compressive force. The angle is 36.86 and this is the reaction of A, support A. So let us apply equilibrium equations. So first let me apply the equilibrium equation summation of Fy equal to zero and my sign convention will be all the upward forces as positive. So when I do that, so 7.5 is upward, so I should write plus 7.5 and this FAD is inclined, it will have a components like this. So I should write, so the AD, vertical component of AD is downward, so I should write minus F A D into sine of 36.86. No any other force is there in the vertical direction. So I will equate it to zero. So I can get the value of F A D as so I'm getting it as plus 12.5 kilonewtons. So since I'm getting plus, it means my assumption of ADS compression is correct. Now let me apply the next equilibrium equation, summation of Fx equal to zero, taking the forces in this direction as positive. So AB is in that direction. So I will write it as plus FAB and for AD, it will be minus minus FAD cos of 36.86 no any other force is there in the horizontal direction so i will should equate it to zero ad value i already know which is 12.5 i'll substitute the vat that value in this equation and i can get the value of f a b as so i'm getting it as plus 10 kilotons so since a b i'm getting positive it means a b had assumed tension so it is correct. Now let me go to joint B now and draw the free body diagram of that. Okay, now this is a free body diagram of joint B. So now you should remember that at joint B we have, we have a real load of 15 kilonewton. So that also you should consider now. So most of the students may commit some mistakes at this point. They may not consider this 15 kilonewton, but you should be very careful at joint B. We have already 15 kilonewton of real load that you should consider because we are finding real forces. Now the force in the member AB is already known to you, which is 10 kilonewton. And I'm assuming force in the member BC as tension and force in the member BD also as tension. Now by inspection of this diagram, you can easily say that since when FAB is in this direction so FBC should also be in this direction so so that this point will be in equilibrium and when we have 15 kilonewton downward load so we should have some upward force in the member BD 
now by inspection I can directly write the value of FPC or also you can apply the equilibrium equation and you can check so FBC is 10 kN tension and FBD is 15 kN that also will be under tension you can apply equilibrium equation I can, can check the correctness of these answers but by inspection you can directly write that so now we have found the forces in the member AD, AB, BC and BD so similarly likewise you can choose each joint separately and try to find the forces in the other members so I will not try to do that I will summarize the directly summarize the values of uh, virtual forces and real forces using a tabular format so I have summarized the values of virtual forces and the real forces in a tabular format so these are the members so these numbers represent the virtual forces these numbers represents the real forces this is the length of each and every member of the truss now the minus sign indicates it is a compressive force and the plus sign indicates it is a tensile force now I have taken the product of these three terms now without giving uh, importance to the sign and this is the summation of this column so I can remember this equation of virtual work principle that is 1 times delta F now I want the deflection at point D that's why delta F at D summation of delta F I times F I L I divided by A I E I now in our case A E is a constant one so I can just uh, put it as it is so I can write it as delta F into at D is equal to so this is a summation 198.75 divided by A E so it is 198.75 divided by A E so it is in terms of meters since I am getting a positive value so the deflection is downwards so this is how you can find the vertical deflection at joint D so it is 198.75 divided by A E so once you put the value of A E you can exactly get the value of deflection at joint D so this is how you can solve for the numerical example so we will see some more examples in the next videos till then thank you bye